Hello everyone and welcome back to another Leak Code video solution. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Leak Code question, minimum operations to make an array equal. Alright, so for solving this question, there's actually a really simple pattern and what I'm going to do is I'll try to show you how we can come across and identify that pattern and use it to solve our question. So let's start off by reading what the question is actually asking for. Alright, so we're going to be given an array of length n where array i is equal to 2 into i plus 1. So for example, the fifth index would have a value of 5 into 2 plus 1, which is 11, okay? And i is going to be in the range of i is greater than or equal to 0, but less than n. Um, okay, so in one operation, we can select two indices. So we can select one index x and one index y. So whatever index x is, we're going to subtract one value from it. And we can set, uh, select index y, where we increase its value by 1. So for example, if we have uh, two things, one with a value of 1, one with a value of 3, and uh, what we could do is we could increase the value of 1 and decrease the value of the other one, okay? So the goal here is to make all of the elements equal to the array. And it is guaranteed that all elements of the array can be made equal using some operations, okay? So given an uh, integer n, the length of the array, return the minimum number of operations needed to make the elements of array equal. So let's take a look at the first example that they gave us over here, which is n is equal to 3, okay? So we're only going to be given n, which is again the length. So the first step, just to make it easier, let's form our array from scratch, okay? So our array is going to have a length of 3, okay? Now, what exactly are their values going to be? And to get their values, we're going to be using the formula which they gave us, which is n into i plus 1, all right? And just to make it simpler, let's write the index value, so 0, 1, and 2, okay? So in this case, uh, at the 0th index, it would be 2 into 0 plus 1. And that's nothing else but 0 plus 1, which is 1. So over here, we have 2 into 1 plus 1, which is uh, 2 plus 1, 3. And then over here, we have 2 into 2, 4 plus 1, which is 5, okay? So this is what our array looks like when n is equal to 3. And this is the rule that we're following to get the actual values. Now, what exactly are we supposed to do? Our goal is that all of the values here have to be equal, and we want to do so in the minimum number of steps. So to make it the minimum number of steps, we have to kind of fixate on one target. So what is going to be our final target for this question? What is the value that is going to be consistent or the same in the entire area? Now, how exactly do we find that? So one really simple way to do that is we're going to look for the value which is in between of the entire area. So in this case, we want a value in between of 1 and 5. And that value could be the number 3. Now, why exactly do we want a number in the middle? And the reason for that is because what we could do simultaneously is we can always increase the smallest value and decrease the biggest value, right? So uh, uh, x, I think, so x is the one which decreases by 1 and y increases by 1. So this could be y, this could be x, and we could do that for each pair. So uh, let me just show you one example. So let's say we have a total of four things. So we could increase this by y, decrease this by x, and, simul and this could be kind of like a pair. Simultaneously, you know, the next time, we could increase this by some amount and decrease this by the same amount. So they kind of form a set of pairs, and the set of pairs is what we're going to kind of use to actually get the minimum number of uh, values, right? Okay, so going back to this case over here, uh, we're finding out that the target is 3. And essentially, we're just uh, saying that because since that's what's in the middle, okay, we want the middle number in this case, and that is going to be 3. And another way to actually get that is... Uh, in this case, we have th uh, three values, and we have a middle value, which in this case is three, and we want everything to be equal to that. All right, so in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to first, we're going to do it in pairs. So first, we're going to take this and this, okay, the uh, first value and the last value. And we're going to increase the first value and decrease the last value until both of them equal are equal to the target. So first, we increase this and decrease this. So this entire thing is one step, okay? And we do it again, right? So now this becomes 3, and this over here is going to become 3. So at the second step, both of them now have the same value, and uh, this is going to stay as it is, 
And as you can see, at the end of two steps, we found the entire value, right? So when n is equal to 3, it took us two steps to find this value. So now let's look at a bigger example, and this should actually kind of uh, show you a pattern which is visible in this question. All right, so let's just take n is equal to 6. So in this case, we're going to form our array again. So we would have 1, then we would have 3. And essentially, this is a arithmetic progression with a difference of 2. So 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. Okay, now the question is, how do we find our target? So when we have an odd number of values, we can find a middle point. But in this case, uh, to find the middle point, uh, we would actually have these two numbers, right? So uh, 1, 2 on the left of that, 1, 2 on the left of that. So the middle point would just be whatever is in between of these two numbers. So 5 plus 7 divided by 2 is equal to 6. So the target is equal to 6. And just for the sake of simplicity, another way that we can find this target is by taking the sum of all of these values. So let's just do that real quickly. So 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 11. So that would be 20, 27, 30, 35, 36. Okay. So that would be 36. That's the sum of this. And we're going to divide it by how many elements are there, which is nothing else but the n value. So 36 divided by 6 gives us a value of 6, which is the same thing as the target. So that's another way to find the target, okay? So now that we know the target, we're going to perform the operations uh, in that manner. And remember, we're going to do them in pairs. So we're going to increase and decrease the first and last in the same amount of times. Then we're going to increase and decrease the second and the second last the same amount of times, and so on and so forth. So let's start off with this over here. So this, we're going to increase it by 1, and everything else is going to stay the same, so I'm not going to write anything. And then we're going to decrease the last one by 1, so it becomes 2 and 10. So we just keep doing this. So this becomes 3, and this becomes 9, then 4, 8, uh, 5, 7, and 6, and 6. Perfect. So at the ending of let's count how many steps it took, so it took 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So after 5 steps, the first and the last value are equal to our target, okay? So we can ignore, so we're done with those two values. Now we're going to look at the next two pairs, which is going to be the second and the second last value, 3 and 9. And we're going to do the same thing until they're both equal to 6. So let's continue. So this 3 is now going to become 4. Uh, 9 is going to become 8. So 4, 8. Then we have 5, 7, and 6, 6. So this is the 6th step, 7th step, and 8th step. So after 8 steps, we have 4 values equal to a target. And finally, we have these two, the third number and the third last number, and we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to increase this by 1, making it 6, and this is going to decrease by 1, making it 6 as well, and this is the ninth step. So at the ending, everything ends up becoming uh, the value 6 after 9 steps. But there's one simple pattern that we can observe. So the thing is, in the beginning, it took us five steps to get the first and the last value to be equal to six, okay? So I'll just write it down over here. So it took us uh, five steps in the beginning. Now, in the second uh, time, which is the second and the second last values, it took us three steps, okay? Then it took us one step uh, for the third and the third last values. So as you can notice, there's a small uh, uh, progression over here, right? So the basic idea is each time we're going to decrease by 2 to get to reach our target. So beginning, it took us 5 steps, then it took us 3 steps, and then 1 step, right? So there's kind of a small uh, progression in this case with a difference of negative 2, and we're going to use this idea to solve our question. So the way we're going to solve our question is we're first going to find our target where we first find the total sum, and then we're going to divide it by the n value, giving us a target. Now that we have our target, we're going to find the difference between the first value and the target, or the last value and the target. But in this case, the first value is easier because we know the first value is always going to be 1. All right, so in this case, the difference is going to be 6 minus 1, which is equal to 5. So 5 is going to be the starting or the basic amount of steps it takes to reach that amount. So we have 5 in this case in the beginning. Now, what we're going to do for our for getting our result, we're going to start off with 5, then we're going to add it with 5 minus 2. 
which is nothing else but three, right? And the reason for that is because after five steps, it takes three steps for the next set. Then we're gonna do five minus two minus two, which is nothing else but three minus two, which is one. So now we have five plus three plus one, and the next thing would be one minus two, but that gives us a negative number. So once we reach one, we're done. So this is nothing else but our result, which also gives us the value nine, which is the same as what we expected. So hopefully you did understand this pattern, and we're gonna use this pattern in order to find our final answer. So now let's see what the code of this looks like. All right, so the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna find our target. And to do that, like I said, we wanna first find the total sum of the array. And we're gonna start off by having a value of zero, and then we're gonna go in a while loop. And we're gonna do this by doing for i in range n. So essentially, if n is six, which means it has a length of six, uh, we're going to be iterating through all of its indices. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We get all the index values. Now using the index value, we can find out what the actual sum is supposed to be, or sorry, value is supposed to be at that index. And we can do that with the formula which they gave us, which is n into i plus 1. All right. And now that we know the value at the index i, we can add this to, I'm oh, sorry, we can add this to our total sum. So total sum plus equals to the value. So at the ending, we have our total sum, and now we can find the target by doing total sum divided by n. Perfect. So now the second step is to find the result, right, which is the minimum number of steps or operations it takes, right? And the way we're going to do this is, like I said, is we're first going to find the difference, and this is going to be the difference between either the first or the last value and the target, okay? And just to make it simple, I'm just going to use the first value because we know the first value is always going to be 1. So this is going to be target minus one. All right, so we have that, and so that should be it. And over here, I just want to talk about two cases. So we have, we might have a condition where we have uh, nothing, right? It's just an empty array, and we might have a condition where we just have the number one. So in both these conditions, uh, we could write separate statements for them, but it's already being taken care of for you, because in this case, we would actually have a difference of negative one, and in this condition over here, we would have a difference of zero. So in order to actually take care of both of those, uh, first, uh, first let's define our result as zero, then we're going to have a while statement. And in this while statement, we're only gonna go inside if our difference is greater than zero. So this takes care, uh, care of the two base conditions I showed earlier. And another thing this does is once the uh, difference is equal to one, we're done. We're not going to do anything else. That means we've reached the ending, okay? So over here, each time we're going to increase our result by the difference, the result plus equals to difference. And each time the difference is going to decrease by two. And why is it two? It's because I showed you the pattern which we uh, saw in, uh, in the illustration earlier. Right, sorry, so that should be it. At the very ending, once difference is equal to one, then the next iteration difference is gonna be equal to negative one or something, and then we're not going to enter the while loop. And finally, we need to return our result. So one thing to note is that for some reason, result is a floating point value, so I'm just gonna convert it to an integer over here. Okay, so that should be it for the solution, and I'm not gonna go over the Java solution because uh, I think it's pretty simple and basic to understand, uh, at least code-wise. So yeah, so that should be it for this, and thanks a lot for watching, guys.